Hey friends, it's Brian. Time for another HVAC video. Welcome to episode number 13. And you're gonna scratch your head because you're gonna be like, what the heck is, why are you in the kitchen? What does this have to do with the air conditioner? Well, stay tuned, I got answers for that. So yeah, these are the kitchen cabinets I said I was gonna make custom seven years ago. Yeah, sometimes house debt, project debt stacks up. Anyway, I haven't gotten around to it. These work just fine. But one of the things that's on my to-do list is not to, this is not a stove unveiling. This is actually using an old blanket to protect the stove. I need to cut in the ductwork for a vent. Because when I do build cabinets, and I really do want to build cabinets, believe it or not, I'm gonna need a way for the gas to get out of the house. And I put the vents in the outside of the wall I just never got around to it. So today we're gonna revisit the spray foam that I didn't have the other day, and I'm gonna cut in these vents. This blanket is to protect my stove because believe it or not, drywall dust does not taste good. Hey, what do you know? Anyway, so let's do it to it. We're gonna go in the attic. It's a wonderful day here in Houston, Texas. It's raining. My yard is so happy. Um, and I might even get my pool filled up for free. There's some kind of blob thing in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, you know, I've heard that before and all I gotta say is it better not turn into a Harvey or an Allison. Anyway, let's do it to it. Um, let's go up in the attic. So I need to put the ductwork in over there. And I need to cut it in in particular and it goes over in there. So let me work my way back there and find a place for this camera to be set up and we'll get to it. All right, so that's the outgoing vent. Let's go ahead and take this tape off here because it honestly doesn't need to be, or actually, yeah, that's the outgoing vent. That doesn't need tape on the inside. And I'm gonna resist the urge to throw it in the corner of the attic like every other lazy contractor. So that's our hole that comes up from downstairs. And that's a hot water line. That's the HVAC line set. Make a little bit more room there, but not much. And it needs to go this way. But for our purposes, we'll put the sharp edge down. And that looks like that's as good as that's gonna get. And then from there, we've gotta connect it to here and it ain't gonna be easy. It would be easier if I had a little place to sit in there, but I don't. I'm only working from an adjacent spot and I don't feel like making a space. So first things first. I'm gonna trace a hole on the sheetrock and then I'm gonna do something that kills me, which is cut a hole in it. But hey, this needs to happen anyway. It's not fast, but it does work. Okay, so I think that's it. Now, hopefully, this is tight enough. 
Oh yeah. So Almost, we're really, really close. So. So I'm going to go downstairs and work this from the bottom. <clears throat> and I'm going to leave the camera run. Uh, actually, I'm going to I'm going to reset the the video. <sighs> Kills me getting in and out of here. I need a ladder, so let me get that. So you all can't see this. And there are easier ways to do this, but this is a one-off, so we're going to do it the hard way.
So that's good enough. So let me fit it from the top. So part of the issue is that I should have roughed this in. I mean, it just, no two ways around it. It should have been done at rough in. It wasn't. There, so that's that. We'll deal with that in foam in a little bit. Let me clean up a little bit of my mess and I'll be back. So you might be asking yourself, so, what in the heck does this have to do with air conditioning? Well, it's simple. There's no access when the, all the ductwork is in its normal home. So, with the air conditioner out, this is about the best access I'm ever going to get. And that's what it has to do with air conditioning. Oh, man. And, you know what? I'm going to pull this out and tape it while it's out because it'll be a whole lot easier to deal with out here so if you are doing this sort of a project one of my urges is resist the urge to use flexible corrugated duct it will trap grease it's not allowed under building code okay so just don't do it <clears throat> It's uh, one of the more common things that I see as a home inspector that I write up. And I'm sure what I'm doing is not 100% in compliance with code, but it's pretty darn close. I don't think there's anything wrong with what I'm doing. And when you choose a tape for ductwork, make sure it is a listed tape. So this is Nashua tape and it is it's actually from 2015 it's 324a tape it's a ul listed tape and the ul listed means it's been tested and proven to work and we just want to keep the grease inside the pipe or the smoke or whatever it is that we're blown out of here so yeah this is way easier to do with the with the ductwork loose and I'm using flex or the adjustable um, segments, they're actually elbows, because it's just the simplest solution to what is otherwise not a very long duct run. <clears throat> this tape's gotten kind of expensive. It was uh, $18 yesterday at Home Depot, so I was really happy that when I got back from Home Depot, because I couldn't remember if I had it, that I found the majority of a roll and enough to do this project. Hopefully. All right, so we just need a little bit here. I don't like to work with very long pieces of this material, so you will typically see me work with it in small segments like this. I 
All right, just one more little piece. And then I'm gonna take a break to stretch my legs because this is an uncomfortable position and it's really warm in here. At least for me it is. Um, right so that gets this in here and then we're just gonna stick it to the first nub and that gives us a little stick out for when we go to install more of this and this is gonna be a giant pain in the ass to tape around but I'm gonna go slow and be patient and it'll be okay. And I want the ridges to point out. I'm actually just gonna see what I'm looking at here. This is really a two-handed project. I'm trying really hard not to get cut. <clears throat> and then we would need one more. So the way you adjust these is by rotating them. Yeah, I'm gonna need at a minimum, I was going to take a break, but... Oh, I just got that one. Awesome. So I think... This isn't going to be the end of the world difficult, but it's also not going to be simple. I've almost got that one into a 90 degree. And and again, there isn't going to be anything easy about this, so cuz I'm doing it with one hand and that's difficult. Let me take my break because I'm getting irritated. All right, after a nice little uh, break that turned out to be a lot longer than I expected it to be, I'm back. And I'm going to see if I can. There we go. I can wiggle myself a little closer. So first things first, I need to get this uh, to be stuck. I need to affix this. 
And one of the reasons I don't pull too big of a piece of this is because it will curl up on itself like you saw it try to. All right, so that's that. Now we gotta figure out how to get from here to there. There we go. And that, now that we have it connected, we just have to tape the hell out of it. And that is gonna take a while. So we'll start with, that actually was a lot easier than I expected it to be. And that's part of the reason when you get frustrated, it's just a good idea to stop and take a break. Now, I'm going to be lazy, and I'm going to just tape a bunch of this stuff from this side, and then I'll work my way over there for the rest of it. I think the hardest part of this is peeling the backing off the tape.
And you want to make sure you push this stuff down real good because that's what's going to seal it. If you don't do that, it'll peel up. So now it's just going to get a little more difficult. And again, patience is your friend. Just slowly work on it. Now you could use mastic on this, but I've got the tape, so. <clears throat> really should use mastic and tape, but I'm just gonna tape it. So one of the things you can do is you can tent the tape a little bit. And that'll stop it from curling. So here where I've got it, it's curling a little bit on me. You just kind of take it with your fingers and tent it a little bit, and that will stop the curling while you work with it. there needs a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you. 
And I did get a little tiny, tiny cut. This stuff is razor blade sharp. So another little piece there. One piece there. have to do this more or less by feel. And that does make it a little difficult. Especially when we're down here in an area where we really need to lean over this to do it right. So I've got to rotate myself around here. <clears throat> All right, oh, that's exciting because this has been a long, long time in coming. And now that that's done, we can get the fun stuff. So much for stops quickly. We're just trying to make sure that it's pretty much sealed.
All right, and then we're gonna seal this. This is just to hold this still. Now in a conventional house, this is actually a really important step. But in a spray foam house with a conditioned attic, it's not important. I'm just doing it for my own personal reasons. So let's run over to the other side. All right, we got a little bit to do in here. Much easier to get to, believe it or not. That's it in here. So now let's go downstairs. So a gap as small as a quarter of an inch is an invitation to a mouse. And a half an inch is an invitation to a rat. So we're just gonna get rid of the gap. And there's one more area that needs this. Actually, I'm going to move the camera where y'all can see it. Now, that's messy, but it'll clean up easy. So I'm gonna poke some in here. All right. Uh, need a little more in here. All right, that's it. So this'll go ahead and expand expand out a little bit, but we're, we're basically done out here. <laughs> 